this Sunday is going to be my first professional game in my hometown. Just come out and support the team. You know, we're looking for fans and building up this team. Coming into the game this Sunday, it's at 5 p.m. and we're here, the Fight Niners. We're going to be up against them. It's the West versus the South in DC. It's our first home game. You know, lots of blood to spill. Welcome and good afternoon to Cardinal Stadium at Catholic University. I am Preston Thompson alongside Roland Pratt here at D uh, Old Glory DC MLR's first ever exhibition rugby match. What a beautiful day for some rugby. The first ever professional rugby match in the area. Great weather, a really, really active uh, fan base, I should say. Uh, they've had a few drinks. Everybody's having a good time. We've got some live music. Let's get ready to play some rugby. Yeah, we've had a fantastic atmosphere so far. We've had fans continuing to pour in from the tailgating section, from the beer garden and the family area where the kids are at. Uh, the atmosphere here is just amazing. Uh, and, and both squads are really excited to get this game kicked off. Yeah, it's properly electric. We've had a couple of really, really good curtain raise games uh, that uh, we've got to see some really good rugby already. But uh, I think everybody now, you can see them pouring into the stands. Mm -hmm eagerly awaiting the uh, the old glory, his first ever team to, to hit the field. And as sunny as it is, we still have a, a, a bit of wind, so it's going to be difficult for both teams to maintain the uh, same level of aggression throughout the full 80 minutes with how humid it, it is. Um, but then also that wind factor uh, giving one team an advantage, so we'll see uh, which side kicks off first. I think it's going to be a very different uh, game today. Uh, we have uh, we have the players coming in right now. Yes, we got them running in next to each other. We've got Old Glory in the white and Shannon RFC in the multi-toned blue. As this raucous crowd welcomes on their home team, Old Glory DC. What a momentous occasion! A lot of these players that you're familiar with, they're representing their. Uh, they're a home region in front, of, in front of some of their family and friends here in the, in the stands. So many of these guys were born and bred in the Mid-Atlantic area and many more actually just very, very local, whether it be Northern Virginia, DC itself, or the just outskirts of Maryland um, with a few others that um, you know have come from Pennsylvania or the other outlying areas. And uh, So this is very much a local team, uh, which I think everybody can be very proud of in the area. No, it's probably a lot of players on Shannon's club, uh, their first time here in the States. Let's see how they adjust to uh, the weather conditions that we've got going. They're going to feel this 88 degree weather. And also we've got both teams' anthems, so we will be silent for the duration of both of these Ireland and America's national anthem. And here is the U.S. anthem. Please stand at home.
Well, that was beautiful. Uh, again, welcome to Cardinal Stadium at Catholic University. I'm Preston Thompson, joined by Roland Pratt. Uh, we are seconds away from kickoff from Old Glory DC's first ever exhibition match against Shannon RFC, the most successful uh, cl club in all the All-Ireland League, uh, as we'll get set to have the rosters Shannon lineup. The front three, we've got Connor Glynn, Jordan Prenderville, and Tony Cusack. The locks, we've got Luke Moylan and Ronan Coffey, captain as well. And the six, seven, eight, we've got Kelvin Brown, Charlie Carmody, and Colm Heffernan. In the back line, we've got Aaron Hare at nine. 10, we've got John Bateman at wing, Ethan Maloney. 12 and 13, we've got Jack O'Donnell and Pa Ryan. And then 14 and 15, Darren Gavin and Ben Daly. And for your home side, at starting at loose head prop, Will Vakalahi, Oshin O'Neill, Dante Lopresti, Mason McElwee, and Tyler Barbary. Uh, Barbary, finishing that out. Dakota Worth, Fred Wintermantle, and Fred McElvee. And, and John Brown, Josh Brown, I believe, yeah, getting the eighth spot. Yeah, that's Josh Brown's spot. And we are live, the first ever kickoff for Old Glory DC. As Stapleton gets us started. And where are we? And Shannon makes a mistake, lets the ball go to ground. Old Glory immediately pouncing on it. Reed recycles. Dakota Worth getting his first taste of contact. Reed recycles again. A little over the head of Stapleton. Old Glory not bothered by that as they regather quickly. The ball. Now we get some forward runners right off of Reed recycling. Shannon trying to make a nuisance of the breakdown there. Old Glory probably gonna try and reset after getting pushed back. Try and get some momentum built up again. He's got a little bit of a Kari. extra handbags going on between Shannon RFC and Old Glory. The ref has not seen it happen. It's just two teams sharing their culture with each other. Yeah, just, some, just some friendly handbags, yeah, you know? Absolutely. Nothing, nothing wrong with this. Handbags like dusk. We usually have that at dawn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, one of the old Glory players heard that uh, someone on Shannon didn't get their passport stamped uh, <laughs> at the airport, so he was just getting it stamped for him. Sure. Um, welcome, welcome to America. Now let's I see what the touch says. I don't think there's any big deal here. Just let the boys play. You know. Yeah. I don't. I don't think we'll have any cards. All right. So we have the replay. I wonder if we'll see how this happened. So the ball was shooting. All right. So. Okay, not 10, so the Shannon player is illegal uh, and tried to pull the nine into the rock as well, so. But it was all for naught. Let's see yeah. what the, Selects ball. if we'll go back to that penalty. Yeah, just to talk to the captains, yeah. nothing coming from that scuffle. You know the crowd likes to see their home side, not afraid to back down this early Absolutely. on. Absolutely. As the Shannon boys will be the same, they're a very young mm -hmm. side. I think all of the team that's right there, they're all under 24, 25 years of age. So a very youthful side. And uh, they'll be looking to use those lo uh, young legs to run around the old uh, glory guys who are definitely going to try to punch it up here. And as the touring team, you kind of have to set the tone. You know, you're the tourists. You, ha 100%. you have to make your presence felt. Now, the wind obviously playing a factor in that kick. And you know, we mentioned the heat and the wind, how both teams are going to use that. Uh, Shannon having the benefit of the wind in this first half. Our first line out for Old Glory. First jumper. Nice a clean line out. Stapleton takes it up. Got a crash ball to Zach. I think that was Selby that took yes, that ball. Yes, that up. was Selby. Nima Tuwalu. Attacking with the weak side here. As well. Lakahali making a break. Nice carry. That was a fantastic carry. Stapleton regathering the ball after it hits the ground. Winter mantle over. Reed recycling. Again, slowing things back down. Let's get our footing again, Old Glory says. Try and set the ball. Lopresti getting his first carry. The Lopresti brothers looking to make their impact felt on this match. Yeah, the, his brother Guy is on the bench today. So another penalty. Like you said, uh, Old Glory looking to punch it up a little bit more. 
put Shannon on the uh, on the defensive, and it seems to be working out. I think you're going to see the scrum half Reed playing a big role in today's game, being able to settle down his team. Uh, he's played uh, many many years. I think he's been playing since he was five years of age in South Africa and came to the United States and has been an All American. This player um, will set the tone today. So there's the replay of the of the penalty and how we got here. Yeah, so speaking of, of Michael Reed, uh, I believe he's played professionally in the States before uh, in San Francisco. Correct. Uh, the now defunct uh, Pro 12, as the Pro League it was, Rugby. It was just called Pro Rugby. Pro rugby. We don't have to talk about yeah, that. You know, yeah. we got MLR now. It was back in the day. Yeah. We were young and naive. Yeah. <laughs> but again, Michael Reed was one of the better players on that squad. And we got Nick Cool here Nick with cool. the first ever points for Old Glory. The vice captain, Nick Cool, slotting an easy three points to put Old Glory up on the tourists. Shannon will try and counter with their first kickoff. Now let's see how Old Glory responds when uh, the ball is in their territory. Shannon are going to be desperate to get their hands on this ball just for nothing else but just to settle themselves down. And when the crowd's behind uh, the, the home team, you have to quiet them down. You can't let momentum and, and that atmosphere uh, get to you too much. Somehow, and this is just the worst thing that could have happened to them is to just concede points so early in the game within the first five minutes. I know it was only a penalty, but uh, that'll definitely give the Glory Boys a bit of confidence. All right, a deep kickoff. Not under any pressure is the point scorer. Gets taken down, possibly inside his 22. Shannon slow up on defense if Old Glory wanted to spin out wide, but Stapleton elects to get a bit of a clearance kick. Does not find touch, however. Shannon looking to counter, spinning it wide, and it's ill! Oh, oh, Wintermantle! Fred weird. Wintermantle almost intercepted it. Winter is not coming, right now at least. That's the old timer. <laughs> We've got a replay of that real, real quick. Shannon uh, definitely had the advantage there. Um, they were spitting the ball wide. Old Glory looked like they weren't set on defense on that side, um, but, but Fred really bailing them out there. So here's the kick, doesn't find touch as it swings over. Uh, oh, unfortunately, we're not, oh, are we going to get to see it here? Well, Fred Wintermantle stepped into the line like he was 21 years of age. <laughs> he is well into his 30s. I yeah. think he's 36. I was able to speak with Fred before the match. A couple of these players, uh, they weren't too nervous about the, uh, uh, the climate here. They were just hoping that by the end of the match, they were still fit enough to take advantage of it because they know that Shannon hasn't been practicing in this weather. Absolutely. As the game goes on, we'll see how the Shannon guys um, can cope with the, uh, with the blazing heat. This could be a good first scrum. We'll see what happens here. Yeah, so we had the first line out. It was an easy uh, front lifter by Old Glory, not taking any chances there, nothing a little too intricate. Let's see how the scrum packs down. And, uh, if looks they try like, and get an arm wrestling match here. Looks like the Glory Boys might have a couple of pounds on this pack of Shannon, so we'll see what the technique is like. Look for Josh Brown to give them some a steady platform out the back, if they can steal this. Colm Heffernan back there at eight for Shannon. As they Big get push. tight and they start driving, they get advantage. Great technique. Hair. Offloads in contact to the forward looping around. It looks like Shannon finally found something that they can uh, get the upper hand in. A massive pass, Whoa, great a massive gap there. Bride. Pass comes back inside. Old Glory looking to get their hands on the, the quick backs here as the ball does go to ground. But we'll go back to the advantage on the, on the scrum. Get some tension still running high here. Professional rugby. Professional rugby. There's a lot to play for. Neither side wants to back down and neither side will. You know, this young Shannon team, although they've had a really good time when they're here, they know it's game time. They know they're here to do a job and uh, they want to go back home with their heads held high as well. So uh, that's why I think you're seeing a little bit of the extra aggression right now. They want to put a stamp on this game too. All right, let's see the Shannon using the win to their advantage to get a deep line out. It looks like we got a Shannon player down, number 14. 
I think that's Darren Gavin that's uh, that's got a, it looks like a calf or a foot problem. All right, so the first line out for Shannon, deep in Old Glory territory. Let's see how their mall defense works out. They can get them pinned early. Shannon continues to roll with it. We have advantage already to Shannon. Now it's a little bit muddled. Ball's at the back. Let's see if we can try and maul it over. I think it's there. It's playable for the night. Oh, oh wow. Big giant gap. Aaron Patrick Hare cuts right through that defense for the first try of the match. Pulling Shannon ahead 5-3. to three. Should be a quite, quite the easy conversion. It was a complete uh, defensive miscue there on the mall. There was nobody there playing on defense on the open side. And uh, it was an easy try for a little stepper like the, like the Shannon scrum half. And he made short work of that. Yeah, we got word that the uh, Patrick Hare was the man to watch, the danger man to watch, and didn't take long, under 10 minutes, for him to show uh, just how quick he can be. And like you said, maybe Old Glory a little too focused on that mall defense, had he heads down, not looking up before the ball came out. Version is good. Score moves to 7-3, Shannon over Old Glory. So both teams have had uh, attacking time. Both teams have come away with points. Um, you know, first 10 minutes done. What do you think so far? I think it's been uh, exactly like we thought it would be. Um, I think that uh, we're starting to see how Old Glory want to play. They want to be a physical, um, dominant uh, forward pack, but we're seeing the technique of Shannon uh, in the scrum and the lineouts and uh, just their own technical uh, ideas on how they're running their lines and they've created large gaps in the old glory defensive line. Uh, so it's going to be who has the ball right now, I think is... Uh, like a lie with a big hit there. Very important. So old glory going for the, the same bit of the field on their kickoff. Shannon moving on slow, possibly a box kick here. Nice Pretty height. high. Nick Cool under it. Good take by Cool. He's under pressure. Brought down by two men. But Fred is there to clean up that ruck and secure the ball for Old Glory. We'll get Josh Brown's first run. As he gets some ground. The ball's quickly recycled. To Don Taylor Press. That's his third carry. Going weak side again. Barbary with his carry. Switching sides now. A lot of one-up runners. Stapleton gets taken into contact. Hatch set to remain calm in a situation like this. Looking for some space out wide. Not able to find any. Shannon so uh, quick on that defense. Michael Reed box kick. Goes straight out of bounds. And they were outside the 22. So uh, a bit of a miscue there between Old Glory. Shannon will now have a line out where that ball was kicked. It was a uh, bit of a mental, mental error yes. there, I think. Maybe it was just the nerves of the situation. But uh, I think we've seen already that the, the Shannon guys, their defensive line has been very good. We have to thank Iron Vine Security, a sponsor of Old Glory DC. The connected world is a safer place for Old Glory fans thanks to Iron Vine Security. Iron Vine provides cutting-edge cybersecurity solutions for enterprises across the U.S. and around the world with experience in over 30 countries. At Iron Vine, we are driven by purpose to solve the toughest security challenges so you can stay at the top of your game. Thank you, Iron Vine. We've got a Shannon line out right now. Let's see what they're trying to run. They had a very easy take the last time. Straight up this time in the middle. Another drive. Let's see if Old Glory can maintain their discipline on this mall, not give up advantage so quickly. Shannon moving, plodding forward. Old Glory looking for any, any response they can get, and there's the advantage. Slowed him down a little bit. 
And then we'll go back to the penalty. No reason for Shannon to not do the same thing. Go for the line out and go for the mall, don't you think? I tend to agree. It's been working quite well. They've, uh, they have their number five there has been doing really, really good work. Uh, that's uh, Roland Coffey. And that's the captain today, isn't he? And uh, I think two of the balls have gone to him so far, and he's done good work with them both. In the corner. You gotta wonder if Old Glory will even contest this line out, or if they'll just wait to see which pod is lifted and where they can set them all, because they need to get that early shove whenever they can against the strong Shannon pack. Coffee up again. Stolen. Ball stolen. Barbary. You see Shannon was going for a, a slow line out, maybe trying to catch Old Glory offside. That's not what you need to do with your, with your uh, stolen possession that deep in your territory. They'd love to have that one back. I know they saw the space, but sometimes you just have to put a boot to mm -hmm. it. <laughs> yes, yeah, so it looked like Shannon was, was going for a little bit of a slower developing mall, but Old Glory, they're under no uh, obligation to wait for them to set it up. Well, I think when Coffee came down, he held on to the ball uh, right at the front. Barbary was able to come in there and rip it out of his hands with a great steal. Uh, you don't see that very often, but it was completely legal play. Almost on the exact opposite side of the field as they were just on. Similar situation. Another front pod. Better they get it quicker time. going this time. Old Glory managing to keep it set, not giving up any penalties. Are they over the line? I think they're held up, though. Held up. Now, the scrum was another uh, point of dominance for Shannon the last time. We've only had one. Let's see if they can continue that this close to the Old Glory try line. So here's the line out as it happened. And we'll live cut back right to the scrum as we're setting up. No one watching that weak side. I wonder if Michael Reed will cut around. The six has to keep his head up. Again, watch the scrum half. And it's wheeled. That's oh, a penalty, penalty try. try. Unfortunate for Old Glory, not able to keep the scrum from wheeling. Uh, leading to an easy seven for Shannon. That was pretty much just an arm wrestling match. That was all muscle. That was all technique is what that was. This pack is a much smaller, but they are so tight, they are so low, and they're getting underneath the Old Glory props, and they're causing havoc right now. I think the Old Glory boys need to get that sorted out pretty quickly. Yes, they need to maintain their drive in the scrum, not let either side give. Uh, and obviously, since, since that was a penalty try, there is no conversion. It's an automatic seven. We should have Stapleton getting us started again. Ball is deep. Plenty of time for Shannon. Ball stays in. Cool takes it cleanly. Swings the ball wide. Stapleton has it. Give Ryan Finds his support. Ryan Burrows on the quick catch, and he's hit immediately. Ball's recycled quickly. Stapleton with a grubber through. He maintains possession. Oh, but it just loses it on the ground. Knock on called. Nice idea, though. Yeah, nice idea. Showing that no matter what, 14-3, they're still going to attack. They're not going to change their game. Well, also, they have to figure out something, how they're going to break that Shannon defensive line, right? So that little kick through might not be a bad uh, idea to employ again, uh, whether that be the box kick over the top or just a little grubber through. Uh, we have to get that uh, defensive line turned. We've got a fantastic crowd here today. Uh, we've got 
people standing all around. Stands look full. Uh, I think we still have people over in the beer garden. Uh, just the entire spectacle here has been fantastic for Old Glory's first There's match. There's thousands of people here. Oh, yes. It is a great spectacle, a great event, and everybody seems to be having an excellent time. And this is just the beginning. Except maybe the Old Glory front row right now. <laughs> yes, as we <laughs> scrum down one more time. <laughs> Set real quick. Looks like Vakalahi might have slipped there, couldn't quite find his bind. Another, oh, and we've got a Barely penalty. drive, I believe. So not all is well in the Shannon scrum, but they had the early advantage. Yeah, quite possibly an early drive. Nice break there for Old Glory. But again, the kick probably can't go as deep as they would like it with this wind. Not, not bad. Not bad. Inside Shannon territory, inside that 22. Let's see if we can set it up now. I think uh, we'll have to see uh, McElway here in the line out, if we can get some clean ball and uh, unleash this uh, Old Glory back line. You haven't seen the horses run too much yet. Not yet. Uh, we haven't seen the fly in Hawaiian, who's number 11 on the wing here for Glory, uh, Vedakina Malafu. Oh, nice steal by Shannon. Went back, Ball Shannon gone backwards. Ball. Old Glory having to come up quickly on defense. Going for the poach, not quite getting it. Another clearing kick, but it stays in. Burroughs on it. Cool is with him in support. Burroughs just running right up into the line. Finding some space is Burroughs. Rugby league style. Rugby league style. Now let's clean this ball up, and it bounces oh, right into no. Shannon's hands. That is calamitous. But Patrick Francis Ryan takes it from about midfield. Ha Ryan onto the posts. That's um, it's unfortunate for Old Glory. They had momentum. They got a penalty. They lost the lineup, but they had this nice run returned by Ryan Burrows on that kick. Um, but it was just that pass. It tipped on the fingers. And here's the replay of the Burrows run. Ball taken, quickly recycled by Michael Reed. And here's the pass. Just could not go to hand. You got to wonder if that was the intended receiver or not, so I don't think any player was particularly ready for it. It was unfortunate though, he should have taken that ball and, uh, you know, but unfortunately at this level, you're gonna see mistakes and you're gonna see them punished. And that's exactly what's happened here in the last uh, 20 minutes. With uh, an easy two points converted there. Old Glory have made a few mistakes and they've, every single one has been punished. And I believe due to the heat, we will have a mandated water break. So the score remains 21 to three after that errant pass finds its way into Patrick's hands and he goes the full length for the try. And he dots it down right between the posts. Easy, easy conversion. So we actually got the chance to speak with head coach of Old Glory DC, uh, Andrew Douglas, uh, about being a new rugby club and playing a historic matchup against the Shannon RFC. I think these guys here playing that hunger in front of their families, in front of their friends, in front of people that know them, and in front of the area, they're playing for DC. And that's probably the first ever. They're playing for DC under that banner. Um, and that's what's going to pull them together, I think. Shannon, 
your professional team, Division One in Ireland, so they're going to come here. They haven't had a great season. They'll be disappointed with what happened with them in Ireland. So I think we've got to make sure that we've got organisation, we've got enthusiasm, we've got desire, and we've got a will that we want to succeed. I want to see us working hard for each other. Um, we'll be competitive, and I want us to be competitive for 80 minutes. So the goal is to work hard for each other, uh, to get organised and be prepared to work really, really hard for each other. If we can do that, we'll have some sort of success. I believe the water break <clears throat> is almost over, and we'll get restarted with a kick from Old Glory to Shannon. So at least it's good for Old Glory to know that at least some of these tries haven't been outright um, dominance by, by, by Shannon. They you haven't know, been out rugby yet. Yes. Yeah, no, absolutely, it's correct. It, it is their own mistakes that are their own doing, uh, which obviously they'll be looking at with video study and uh, uh, back on the training ground over the next few weeks. But, uh, you know, uh, this game is far from over. Another deep kick taken cleanly. We have our clearance kick. It stays in, taken again by Cool. He has his support. Puts in a high kick, a long one. We've got the counter attack. Lovely little kick down the corner. Bounced in once or twice before going out. Old Glory line out. Excellent Just tactical kick. Yes. Excellent tactical kick. Nothing good was coming from uh, that attacking phase. So get rid of it and put Old Glory under pressure. I think that's the Shannon winger, Darren Gavin, there that, that uh, kicked that in. Um, just playing the territory game right now, settling things down. They have the lead. We're going to force Glory to go the length of the field. O'Sheen O'Neill with the throw in. We haven't seen a long throw yet. And we finally get one. It goes to the third pod, but just off his fingertips, bounces forward into Shannon's hands. You got to wonder if the front pod this close into your territory is just the safest option. As the ball is recycled by Hare, looking for which way to go. Another almost interception by Fred. Play on, though. Play on, and it was not uh, a car defense on that knockdown, but it was a penalty. Well, nothing came from the advantage. Good play by the referee, Derek Summers. That's the second time Fred Wintermantle's gotten his hand on the ball. Hasn't quite taken either of them in yet. It's definitely something that he is targeting in this match. Uh, and, and so far, Shannon hasn't uh, wised up to it yet. The other thing is, if he does it again, he'll get a yellow card. Yes. <laughs> Can't have any more knock-ons there. As Joseph Bateman found touch for the Shannon Pack. Now, we've read this book before, and I believe we're going to see them all. Oh, Ooh, went ball to dropped. Knock on there. So Shannon's still having some miscues in the lineout. It's not all roses for them. They've been able to collect the ball pretty cleanly, but uh, they've been disturbed just when they're trying to get the ball back to begin that driving ball. It's been, actually, it's been pretty good pressure from the old glory guys there in the middle. Tyler Barbary especially has been doing some excellent work uh, there. Uh, but, you know, we just got to see old glory maintain possession now for a couple of minutes. If they can do that, uh, I think we're going to start seeing a slightly different game. Now the last scrum was a Shannon put in, but it did result in a penalty to Old Glory. They're probably just hoping for a clean ball this time, though. Now it was not stolen. hooked back, but it's the platform stolen. looks fine. Shannon ball. Ball's at the back. Eight man pick and go. It's taken down by Fred. Ball recycled. We're going to punch it up with the forwards here. Selby upshot a little bit, providing a gap for Shannon. We'll go back to a penalty. The breakdown got pretty messy there. Is that an offsides call? I could not see what happened. Old Glory have got to fix that scrub. That was against the head. That can't happen. I'm not sure. I think we might see a front row replacement here pretty soon. 
You've got a penalty. You might as well call for the scrum. They, like you mentioned, they have had some ex troubles with the exchange after the line out when they're trying to get it back there for them all. So going with the surest platform they can before this restart. So again, we have to worry about the penalty try here because of the dominance factor. Uh, we have to worry about the eight-man pick off the, off the base, and then we have to worry about the nine-man, uh, the scrum half. Yeah, try score Patrick Hare, uh, and then, then massive eight-man Colm Heffernan, and of course the rest of the squad, but both of those players you cannot sleep on this They're close serious to the weapons. Line. Ball is in. No drive just yet. Uh, delayed oh. drive. Here it goes. Seems to be popping up now. We've got advantage call to Shannon. They've got the crash ball coming with the center. Over. And he dives right over the line. He ran a beautiful line there, going right toward the gap. Was oh, that Jack glory. O'Donnell? I believe that, that was. 12? Yes, Jack O'Donnell, number 12. Just finding that gap. And here comes the replay. So you see him running right in between. I believe that was someone in the forward pack and then the, the fly half. Neither of them could get the right angle to bring him down. I think what we're seeing right now is uh, the difference in defense in the two clubs. Uh, the Shannon defensive line has been rock solid so far. They haven't allowed very many uh, line breaks. Uh, whereas the old glory guys are still trying to find their way. Their, uh, their scheme is not quite working for them right now. And they think they just need to pick up the pace a little bit and work harder. Yeah, in all these situations, they've been having to get on the back foot as the kick hits the post, which is kind of harder than making it. <laughs> but score remains 26 to 3 after that try. So Old Glory getting on the board first with a quick three, not able to respond. So 26 unanswered points. But you're, but you're right, their defensive strategy, they're having to be put on the back foot. Um, they're not able to scan the field. They're not able to see where all the runners are coming from. They're having to look at where the scrum is uh, getting pushed back. Um, they're just getting distracted, really. Uh huh. When we're putting in kicks, we're just uh, putting it right down to the fullback, and he's either kicking it back or they're starting a counter attack. Uh, whereas the Shannon players are looking for the corners, trying to play a little bit of Ronan O'Gara style. So off that kickoff, finding some space, offloads in contact, not wanting to go down, finally brought down by Old Glory. Barbary trying to make a nuisance of that breakdown there, oh, get things nope. not clean. Got our second phase runners here. As he's been right out, right into contact, and he's swallowed up. Not letting them get the edge. And the ball spits out Old Glory's way. Better defensive work. Definitely needed that. Let's see what Michael Reed can do as he's brought down. Josh Brown. That's pick and go right off the side of the, of the ruck. No one paying attention on Shannon. Got to get the ball out quick now. Stapleton swings it wide. Vakalahi into contact. Not Takes two well. people to bring him down. Reed again with the recycle. Stapleton. Dummy. Makes a couple feet before he's brought down. This old glory tries to reset. keena has got the ball. Ball wasn't the cleanest pass, but it is cleaned up and gathered by old glory. You can't let it sit there too long. Someone needs to pass that out eventually. And we do have a stoppage. Michael Reed looked like he was waiting for the referee to say something. I believe we've, we're going to have the captains come over. I didn't see what happened there. I'm not sure why referee Summers is uh, calling the guys over. Didn't quite catch that. Yeah, I wonder if he had some, uh, Derek had some help from the assistant touch judge. All right, so we've got a replay coming up. So here's a replay of the try we witnessed earlier. You see that Jack O'Donnell coming in on that perfect line, just looping around on that banana run and finding that gap. And just a, a quick talking to again. This is the second time uh, Derek Summers has had to talk to both teams. And he'll probably told them, the next time I do this, someone is going to take a, take a seat for 10 minutes. Go for it. 
And while we have this break, I'm going to give a shout out to the title sponsor, Cuisine Solutions. They are proud to be the title sponsor of Old Glory DC and support the rugby community. Based in Sterling, Virginia, Cuisine Solutions provides high quality sous vide cooked products to more than 22,000 restaurants, as well as first class and business class on top 10 airlines in the world, cruise ships, and major hotels. I was able to get a little bit uh, of a snack before we started the broadcast, and I can tell you it is delectable. I have the Old Glory sandwich. So if you can, <laughs> if it, you need to make it to a match here eventually, so you can try. Yes, they have the famous Old Glory sandwich here. Fantastic food uh, set up right up next to us. If you make it out to an Old Glory match, you'll be remiss to try to miss that. As we get started again. Better scrum from Glory, but still taking a little bit of a back foot. Yeah, Shannon's showing that they're not not keen on passing that ball out until they have advantage. Scrum half is away. And here goes Hare. Tries to break, find the gap, and he does. Does he need support? Oh, he finally gets clobbered. Dakota Worth. As he's brought down. Yeah, Dakota chasing the man down. Pull through. Old Glory messing up that uh, the ruck there. Looks like Shannon has numbers out wide if they use it. No, it goes into contact. Messy ball now, but we do have a penalty. Not coming in straight is Old Glory. Unfortunate. But uh, with how messy that was getting, you got to wonder if a penalty was the best option for Old Glory just to stop the play and get it reset. So here's the replay. Here's Hare's Dyson run. Goes through untouched. But as you mentioned, Dakota Worth not giving up on the play. Did not. So Great cool, tackle from Nick Cool, though. Yeah, Cool making, making the tackle there. And then uh, Kinna himself messing up that ruck, slowing the ball down. But again, as the ball swung wide. Old Glory infringed at the ruck. So we'll have another line out to Shannon. I think right now you can see that the Shannon guys, they're just doing the little things very cleanly, very well. And uh, the Old Glory boys, they're, uh, they're just making a few, a few little simple errors that again, as I said earlier, they're just being um, destroyed on the scoreboard because of it, which is a little unfair, but that's the nature of the game. Yeah, it's sometimes those tiny mistakes that gets you. You like get the drop ball so that severely. led to a 50-meter yeah, try. You know, it's something that normally it's gathered up and cleaned up quickly, um, but in one case it went down for seven points. What a driving ball! Looks like the, almost the entire Shannon team is in there. Finally brought down. Oh, oh and a, and a knock on. All glory, bending but not breaking there. That That's was Dante Lopresti in there with the with the tackle right at the end. He swam the whole way through that. That's the kind of grit that you like to see uh, in this Old Glory squad. They're bending right up until their goal, goal line on that, on that driving mall. But when it matters, when it counted, they were able to create that turnover. As we do have a Shannon man down, that is the tight head prop. Now that we're a half an hour in, we're, I think we're going to start seeing how the weather is affecting mm -hmm. these guys. I can see a lot of water carriers out there. Yeah, you got to wonder uh, if Tony Cusack there is actually injured or if he just needed a sip of water. <laughs> when you're in the front row, you take any liberty you can get. I've heard. It's true. I wouldn't know from experience. <laughs> I was in the back, so I was always asking for a mirror. <laughs> And he's up, no subs yet. He says, there's only eight minutes and a half, I can finish this out. All right, time is back on. So they were able to uh, turn the ball over, but they're not out of the furnace just yet. They're deep in their territory is Old Glory, as we're getting set for a Michael Reed put in. We haven't had too many clean Old Glory scrums. I don't think we've had any clean Old Glory scrums, that's all, to be that's, quite that's honest with you. Yeah. Uh, let's hopefully we can get one here, though. Shannon's definitely going to try and put the pressure on here. Ball's uh, hooked back. Better, Finally, a, a, better. a great platform. Nima Tawalu breaks over a man. That man looks a little shaken up. Finally, some good physical play from the centers as Stapleton clears it. 
Nice job. Great exit strategy mm. right there. But yeah. it's all because of they were able to solidify that scrub. Finally, maybe we can uh, see this going forward now, where they figured it out, they've made the corrections, and hopefully we can see that stability in the scrum going forward, which will allow to get uh, the old glory guys a little bit more of a platform to continue. Yeah, exactly. That that great platform allowed that upfront runner uh, to break ground, give Staples a little bit more room back there to get that clearance kick. Um, probably one of their, even though it was just a clearing kick, one of their better passages there, getting that solid platform. Again, it's a very simple game when you do the little things right. Now another clean line out by Shannon. Looked a little off, but Derek says play on. Hare misses the first run with the dummy pass. Fred going in for the poach, getting taken off. Hare with the pass out. <sighs> nice Punch contact there. Thought he could get through that gap, but he cannot. Well, Great timing there by Stapleton. Stapleton yeah. Getting through there, stealing Stole the ball. By Josh Bride. Fantastic play by Old Glory. They just hold on to the ball. Get this cleaned up. What? Shannon's on the back foot now. You cannot mess this up. Stapleton Zach, passes it out. Zach Foro. Zach Foro. Not held. Nice clean platform again as Reed passes it out. Barbary pops it to his forward. And the pass taken by Michael Reed here as they swing it back to the other side of the field. Ooh. Taken in contact, Michael Reed oh, fakes the face. pass from the ground. The defender falls for it, luckily. But Old Glory still under a lot of pressure here. And finally, Zach clears it, but he's not in this 22, so the ball must stay in. Now let's see what the fullback spins it wide. Shannon electing to use the width of the field. A huge break through the defense, finally brought down. Nice rough tackle there. And a penalty to Old Glory. Holding on is Shannon. I think that was Ethan Maloney, the winger, uh, that brought the ball in, went straight down the middle, but unfortunately he outran his, uh, his own players and uh, was a pretty easy strip there. Uh, he was caught for holding on. So uh, a nice little, nice little break there for the old glory guys and a great clearing kick. You gotta wonder that some of the, the, the bad part about making such a clean break through that defense is you outrun your support. If you uh, get tackled, yes. you're in trouble. So another old glory line out just over midfield, one of their better attacking positions. Uh, in about the last 15 minutes, we have maybe two minutes before half, two, three minutes. Let's see if Old Glory can capitalize and get a try on the board. Going for that Barbary front lifter, up. Stapleton. Nice crash ball out to, I believe we have our first substitute on the field. Oh, that's Josh Brown, is it? I think it's just a different jersey. Okay, Josh Brown, the eight man, uh -huh. getting some go forward ball. Stapleton with a chip through, directly to the wing. And a nice step, but Kina Ca not falling for it. The ball is loose. Finally, Old Glory putting some great pressure on Shannon. This, this ruck is not over with. This is still getting cleaned up, and unfortunately, we have a penalty now. Old Glory getting a little too aggressive there at the breakdown. Still quite a good facet of play. The little kick through again has doing damage. The fullback coughed it up, got under pressure, but you got to admire the Shannon boys. They're just uh, quite comfortable at mopping things up, and, and uh, they got themselves out of trouble there. And now you'll see a little clearing kick. The big thing for Old Glory is that they've shown, they've shown themselves that they can do it. They can break the line. They can win their scrums and their lineouts. Absolutely. I think it's taken 35 minutes. I know they, they scored first, uh, but that's, you know, that adrenaline factor. And this missed. kick is staying in, taken cleanly by Kenna. Now Cool on the counterattack finds his support and Burrows. Burroughs goes into contact, flirting with the line over there, manages to stay in. Reed on the recycle. Josh Brown getting hit, but still falling forward, dragging defenders with him. Reed going back to that weak side. We finally have uh, an advantage. Shannon offside there as the defender shot up. And we'll take that advantage, says Old Glory. Uh, 
Good kick. So this is the deepest territory I believe Old Glory has had this half. In quite some time at least. Just as the wind starts to kick up. Well, Not perfect timing for Old Glory's line out. <laughs> Absolutely. But I think that uh, they should still be able to get some possession here and hopefully push one in before the, the half side. Shannon contests it and wins. And we'll have another clearing kick. Excellent and kick. And this time it does find touch. That was a deep clearing kick, almost to midfield. So, you know, 30 meters difference, 40 meters difference just on that unfortunate uh, fortunate play. Well, for once Glory. again, we've seen that Shannon have made, an, made the adjustment. They've seen where the uh, Old Glory guys want to go. They saw it the last time they were down there. Uh, they were uh, sure that they were going to get a, a jumper up to try and, uh, if nothing else, slow down a little bit of momentum. But uh, they were able to steal the ball. And now we're back at halfway. A cleaner line out this time. Reed to Stapleton. Stapleton to Selby. Able to get back up to the line out was at. Resetting the new gate line. Stapleton skip pass out to Cool. Go cool Kina. finds a flying Hawaiian. Kina putting the moves on. Right down the ankle. Cool there. Cool Perfect has it. Supports. Is he there? He does have the support. Another pick and go by Kina. The flying Hawaiian. He wants to do it all himself. Back saying that they know how to pick and drive too. We're right on the line. The crowd is getting behind their team. And we As have a score. time. That was a beautiful passage of play by Old Glory. Not, not letting go until the final whistle. That was fantastic. We saw that Shannon defense shoot up there, uh, barely missing that interception on that ball to Cool. Was that the big man, McElwee, that got uh, over there? I think it was. <laughs> that was some fantastic support. <laughs> that, yeah, that was a four that scored that try. That's what you're seeing. This team is really fighting for uh, for each other out there. Absolutely. It just shows that they can play with the Shannon boys. There's no doubt about that. Uh, it'll give them a little bit of confidence now going into the second half. We got ourselves a game. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's just cleaning up those small mistakes. You know, we talked about, as you mentioned earlier, uh, Old Glory is not getting out rugby just yet. You know, a lot no, of it's no, no. those own simple mistakes that they're making. Um, but that is what happens when it, everything goes right. Um, and that, that was a... A great passage of play between backs and forwards. Uh, everyone interlinking um, and, and a fantastic run by the Flying Hawaiian. For sure. I think we can see that, you know, uh, Shannon have played an entire season together. All these guys have already played their club rugby this year. Uh, they've had a couple of weeks to rest. They're back over here on tour, but they're primed and ready to play. Uh, the Old Glory guys, this is their first ever game together. Uh, they've had a scrimmage with the Capital Selects a few weeks ago, but that was about it. Unfortunate kick there by Nick Cool. Yeah. Just missed it. Yeah, but it's important to mention, as you noted, Shannon has already played their, their league in the All-Ireland Ireland League. Um, as we head to halftime, 26 to 9, um, we'll be back during halftime with the, an interview uh, with Paul, uh, one of the owners. Paul uh, Sheehy. Uh, Paul Sheehy and Chris Dunlavey. Um, but for right now, we're going to go to a short break. the Imperial Hotel in Tokyo and this area called Ginza, so which is center of Tokyo.
So the atmosphere today has just been absolutely insane. We've had some fantastic, uh, the fantastic crowd. We have a beer garden here. We've got a tailgate section. We have a kids area. Uh, we have everything that you could want. Uh, catering. I mean, th this is one of the best rugby matches that I've been able to attend um, as far as professionalism. Uh, and just a shout out to, uh, to Old Glory. I took the Metro uh, and they have a shuttle about a two minute walk from the Metro um, that brought me here. And I'm an out of towner and I was able to find it. So I mean, this has just been um, absolutely uh, glorious um, to, to not be too nail on head for that one. So we got the first half highlights here. Okay, I can't hear you. So yes, we have a uh, first half highlights of Old Glory's first attacking action. Lakalahi showing that he's not easy to bring down at all. The huge loose forward. So really in, in, in the first half, we had a lot of back and forth um, Old Glory getting on the board first with three points, but then 26 unanswered points by Shannon. But as we mentioned, a lot of it was um, simple mistakes by, it, by it Old Glory. It was a big momentum so change. Yes. It was a definitely a big momentum change, but um, unfortunately, just the Old Glory guys, there was a couple of little, what we would consider to be a minor error, but they just got punished so badly. You know, when you knock a ball on, you don't always see it carried back 50 meters for a try, but that's exactly what happened. But that's, what's, that's why we're playing the game, right? We want to play these upper level teams. We want to get to their level and we want to surpass it. That's not gonna happen unless you play these guys. So this is for the, for the old glory guys, especially the local players, uh, you know, this is a baptism of fire, but it's what you would want. Yeah, if you want to play professional rugby, you have to play at a certain level. Uh, and I think what's really exciting was that despite 26 points like that, Old Glory showed multiple times um, that they do have the defense that it takes um, to turn the ball over when it's tight, when they're in their own red zone. Um, and then they can take that possession and move it down the field. They can make large line breaks uh, and they can hold Shannon um, to their own game in the mall, in the scrum and, and fight back. So. It was really encouraging towards the set at the end of the first half um, to see Old Glory um, not lose momentum like that. They really stuck with it and fought back. I think the most important thing that I saw was that they were able to solidify their scrum. Uh, I think the front row was able to work out their little the little kinks that were going on there. There's such minor little details within the scrum that creates either a great scrum or one that's a little fractured. Um, once they're able to solidify that area, they're going to get a little bit more platform now in the second half. And I, I think that we'll see their strike runners in the back line be able to uh, get some momentum and carry forward. Yeah, Old Glory will finally have the wind at their back. Uh, the sun is going down, um, but they'll have that uh, going their way as well. So uh, we'll, we'll see how that changes. Um, but right now, we're also joined um, by one of the owners of Old Glory, Paul Sheehy. Great, thanks for uh, having me on. And uh, yeah, we're ecstatic. Uh, you know, the crowd is ho hopefully in the second half, our team feeds off this energy. But what a great way to end the half with, with about a minute and a half left to, to score. So our first try ever with Old Glory. Uh, it's a great atmosphere here. You can see the crowd. And uh, I think, you know, I'm judging it's a 10 to 15 point win. I don't know what you guys think, but, <laughs> yes. but uh, I'm hoping we make use of it. Of course, now the flags have completely stopped. But uh, the heat's pretty, the heat's pretty uh, brutal out there also. So what does it mean for you? I, I mentioned this atmosphere, uh, everything that's going on in this crowd. What does it mean for you to see this? Um, you're so ingratiated in rugby. I believe your, your four children play rugby uh, in college and, and in high school. I mean, your love for the game is really manifested here, don't you think? I mean, what does it mean for you to see this? Well, it's just a great rugby community. And we always felt if we got the business side of it right, that we'd have a lot of supporters. Uh, and, and they showed up on a hot day today. And uh, uh, this is why we do all this. And, you know, I was down on the ticket line. I wanted to be up here, but we were just trying to make sure people got through the gates. So these are good problems to happen. Uh, you know, we knew this would be sort of a learning curve in these first four games. And we also know, you know, Shannon's been around since 1884. We've been mm -hmm. around since 2018. So they got a little bit of an edge on us there. Slight. Slightly, uh, yeah. <laughs> but I think, I think uh, in the second half, we're going we're gonna to see Old Glory uh, really stand up and, and do some of the things that we need to do. And look, we're trying to, we're trying to come together as a team, too. 
So this is that first half will probably, I'm sure the coach will have a couple things to say for the boys and, and uh, we'll come out here uh, ready to go in the second half. Well, that's why you play the exhibition season, right? Is to work out all the kinks. And it's not just on the field. It's uh, to deal with, you know, the ticketing and uh, the fan base and make sure that everything is running smoothly and you have the tailgate going on and all the other family activities. I mean, there's a lot of logistics uh, built into this whole thing. And if you just look around right now, everybody's having a whale of a good time. We've got the many rugby players on the field. Fans are clapping them around. We got uh, the tailgate still happening over there. Uh, the band is playing. The food is being eaten. I mean, this is what an environment. This is uh, it exceeded our expectations. So, uh, you know, I think when you look at uh, Catholic Cardinal Stadium here, the tailgate section is wonderful. The beer garden section. We had a band playing there. We're half a mile from the metro. Uh, we had some issues out front. We actually had long lines trying to get in. These are good problems to have. Uh, but we want to we want to work through those because we want to make it a great experience. So uh, so far so good. But we need a we need a strong second half from Old Glory. Completely, completely agree. Uh, and tell us about next week the the match you have going on for Memorial Day. Yes. So we're playing uh, the Scotland U20s. As everyone knows, uh, the SRU are our partners, uh, which we are ecstatic to have them as partners. Mm -hmm. And the team that they're taking to the Junior World Cup will be coming over to play play us. So. Uh, we better be ready because we're going to have a another tough game uh, within a week and uh, we expect the crowd to be just as boisterous and uh, it'll be another test i mean some of those players and i know it says u20s but some of those players are can't be more than a year or two away from the full-on scotland national team i mean playing that is some massive opposition we hope so and we hope we can recruit some for old glory also this is this is a recruiting exercise for us um and and that's part of that's it's actually a little harder to put on an exhibition game, I think, because you have to handle both teams. So uh, it's been it's been a great experience, and uh, you know we, we knew we, it was going to be a challenge, especially with these first two games. But we felt that's the test we needed to uh, put Most our definitely. organization through. So, um, and I'm just excited to see the second half and see how everyone responds. Uh, we've got a new team and a new coach, but this is part of the part of how you have to grow and, and go through these, and I'm sure he's he's going over some critical things in uh, the halftime right now. Uh, thank you for joining us, Paul. Uh, like you said, ex exceeds expectations. This has been fantastic. Thank you for joining us. We're going to toss it over to Andrew, Andrew Douglas uh, and his uh, journey about making it over to the States. Thank you. I just finished my time in Japan, and you know, the, the, the super top league there, there's a pretty intense sort of competition there. It's a lot of pressure and, and uh, then I had a couple of offers from Europe, but I, you know I was keen to sort of settle my family. And then um, out of the blue, this sort of opportunity came up, and uh, Paul Sheehy contacted me and asked if I'd be interested in talking to him. And it was something I hadn't really thought about coming to the States, to be honest. Um, but when I got here and, and I met Paul, I met Chris Dunleavy, the, the other owner, and, and people like uh, Toshi Palomo, and, and that's what got me excited. The people were passionate about rugby and really wanted to see us succeed. And obviously, DC was I thought was a pretty cool city at the time. And, Talked to my wife, and she thought it was a place she could be too. And my kids were happy with that decision as well. So we had a bit of a chat about um, how things could look and, and what sort of um, agreements we could come to, and how it was going to progress. And once I was happy that everyone was doing it for all the right reasons, it became a pretty decision in the end just to, to, to be here with the excitement around it. So we did have the Honor Cup going on. Uh, yesterday and today and as a curtain raiser to this match we did have old breed rugby playing um, it's fantastic to see so many service members here um, being honored uh, and, and, and putting all their hearts out there for each other on the rugby pitch um, you know some of the military schools uh, in, in the US have the some of the most storied rugby programs I um, mean it's always amazing getting to watch them come together and support each other uh, in that way um, and it's all for charity they're raising money for fallen service members and their families and it's it really is a, a, an experience, and um, it's an honor getting to watch them play um, and really thanking them for their service. So the second half that we've got coming up very shortly, um, as I mentioned earlier, Shannon will have the sun in their eyes, and uh, they're going to have the wind in their faces. So before we get to the second half, though, we're actually joined by Chris Dunleavy, the other owner of Old Glory DC. And he's going to talk to us about a little bit about the squad, the makeup of it, uh, and then we'll preview the second half with him. 
Thank you for joining us, Chris. Can I speak? Hello. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for joining us. All right. Now you respond. Thank you for joining us. You, you talk. So, Chris, this fantastic atmosphere that we've got going on today, uh, what does it mean for you to see so much hard work uh, pay off in this? Well, I tell you, it has been more than a year of getting ourselves ready, getting the market ready. Uh, the amazing thing, as you can see from our crowd today and our sponsors lining the sideline, that the rugby community in D.C. has really responded to every amount of work we put in. We've got a, uh, just a phenomenal uh, level of support from uh, business leaders from all the rugby clubs in the region who obviously got the, the fans out to, to watch us. Mm -hmm. So it's been, it's been very edifying to see this kind of response out of the market. And, I, and I've heard from some birds that this atmosphere that we've got going on here is in large part due to you. Oh, so <laughs> are you going to take any credit for this? I mean, this really is a, this is a festival we've got going you on know, here. Yeah, I, I think it, it is very much what we try to achieve. So I will say, I think our, our ownership group, our management team uh, has, has put together a good plan. And like I said, the market responded. So it's important for us to sort of build on the, the culture of rugby, which, you know, has traditions of uh, enjoying itself as well as playing hard, but also make this a very family-friendly environment that, as you can see, brings out uh, young kids and, and young families and parents to enjoy the game as well. Yeah, and you've able, been able to wrap up all of that perfectly uh, uh, in this atmosphere, in this facility, which is a great facility. Um, I, I hear you still play rugby a, a, as well. I do. My, my knees got me a little hung up at the moment, but I, uh, I've been very honored to be allowed back on the pitch by the Washington Irish RFC, one of the great uh, stalwart clubs of the D.C. Mm. area. Uh, over the last four or five years, and uh, many of my, my favorite moments on the rugby pitch have, have come in that period. So I'm, I'm really, uh, it's a sport that gets in your blood, and I haven't been able to shake it yet. If only MLR had come around 10 years earlier, <laughs> maybe. Brother, I was good enough to play 25 years But you ago had the heart. That's all that matters. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah. No, it's, uh, it's a thrill to see, actually, to have play the game and understand how it works and then see the caliber of athlete we've been able to put together to come out and do this. Um, even if, uh, you know, we're, we're reaching to be able to compete with a club like Shannon, you know, a legendary AIL club, uh, it's a great start for, for Old Glory and we feel fantastic about how it's coming together under coach Andrew Douglas. Well, as Roland mentioned, Shannon has, uh, what, 100 years or so Easily. On, on Old Glory. Yeah, and then some, I think. Uh, yeah. but. As I said earlier with Paul, it's like you have to play the best to become the best, right? So yes. um, we're playing a perennial All-Ireland League, um, you know, always right there, thereabouts. Uh, they're in a bit of a, uh, they have a young, hungry team over here this weekend. And, yes. um, you know, they're showing up too. And we could see it was got a little bit, a little bit tough at the very beginning. There was a little bit of handbags early. Yeah. They were showing that they weren't there to make up the numbers as well. And, right. And uh, you know, you can see the old glory guys were, were not taking that either. And uh, and then when they got on with some rugby, and yeah. Uh, yeah. you know, that's a, it's a, a spirited game out there. And yeah. you know, I think we're going to see a big second half. Well, you can tell right off the bat, neither team was taking this game lightly. Uh, they both went out up with everything they had. It was a very dynamic first half, even though the uh, the scoreboard didn't end up looking the way I would have liked. It was uh, a lot of lot of good hard rugby, and uh, very much looking forward to seeing. Well, what you know, we don't play friendlies in rugby; we play tests. That's know? right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> they are tests. Exactly. Well, it was uh, it was a spectacular to see. Um, you know, a number of the set pieces. We've got some work to do on. I think, uh, although I think the the talent of some of our uh, players really show. There's some guys that know how to uh, how to hit their lines and run the ball. Um, got some work to do on how they connect together and our, our passing and catching, but uh, it's been some terrific rugby. It's really enjoyable to see. Yeah, it's been fantastic to watch, especially how they responded as Old Glory and Shannon are about to take the field again. Thank you for joining us and thank you for putting this all together. Uh, we wouldn't be here without uh, you and the ownership group. Thank you guys very much for being here. We really appreciate your, your production and uh, thanks for chatting with me. Thank you so Wonderful much. You much appreciated. Look forward to the second half here. So again, getting, in, getting into the outlook of the second half, uh, Old Glory, I believe, will be receiving right off of the bat. Now let's see what they do with the ball. They're going to have to show that they, they can't kick away possession too much. They're going to have to 
uh, except the fact that they have to run with the ball. They can't count on Shannon to make the mistakes. Uh, they're going to have to make their own luck in this situation. So uh, we'll see how that works out in the early, early minutes of the second half. And then also, we'll have to see when we get some substitutes on here. Because as you mentioned, it's really hot and we didn't see anyone come on in the front row in the first half. No, we didn't. Um, it'll be interesting to see what Coach Douglas has done, um, if he has made any changes uh, to the to the pack, and uh, if they were able to figure out what was going on with the set piece. And, uh, you know, if they're able to figure out those couple of little things and get a little bit of confidence and some continuity, which is always one of the last things to come with a, with a team. Uh, you know, to be a team, you need to play together. And uh, we can see a little bit of uh, lack of connectivity uh, today. But uh, now they've had the, the first 40 under their belts. Let's see if they can get... Um, you know, a little bit more go forward, uh, clean up those rocking situations, and then let their strike runners uh, get forward, go with momentum, and hopefully we can punch a couple of tries in here. I mean, it... Again, Cuisine Solutions is proud to be the title sponsor of Old Glory DC and support the rugby community. Based in Sterling, Virginia, Cuisine Solutions provides high-quality sous vide cooked products to more than 22,000 22, restaurants, as well as first and business class on the top 10 airlines in the world, cruise ships, and major hotels. If you're not here, I can only tell you how delectable this food is you know, before you just drive here yourself and, and get it, or, or do business with Cuisine Solutions. I'd like to point out, while it's great to be in this particular position, it's horrible as a big guy having these wafts of I know, it's steak right next and to rosemary coming down, and right on the other side we've got the beer tent. Uh, I'm I'm a little hungry right now. You, you should have seen me walk up to the to the Cuisine Solutions tent. I wasn't sure if it was only for volunteers or workers. I walked up sheepishly. Can I have some of this, please? <laughs> uh, and they let me have uh, more, more than I wanted. It was fantastic. But what you mentioned before uh, uh, of the connectivity, um, we finally saw uh, towards the end of that half. Um, Old Glory playing as a cohesive unit, and the strike runner finally got the ball uh, and was able to, to right. cash we the defense. We mentioned uh, that Kina would be one to watch a little earlier, and uh, he was able to get the ball with just a little bit of space. He was able mm -hmm. to, uh, you know, get around the, the fullback, and uh, even though he was able to make a last-ditch tackle, but they set it up, mm -hmm. they maintained possession, and they got over the line. Um, so let's see what we got here well, just after the kickoff. Old Glory receives it. Big jo guy does not Josh want to get brought down. again. He says, send some forwards my way. It's an insulting task to bring a back after me. We'll have some more forward running here. Crashing the ball up. Nice little run by Lopresti there. It's all glory showing that they want to run with the ball. They're going to have to. They, they can't let uh, Shannon dictate the speed of this game. Quick defense up there as Reed resets. Possibly a bit of offsides. Yeah, and offsides. it is caught. Yeah, they shot up way too quick. But that defensive line speed again, it's causing Old Glory a lot of trouble. And I guess when you're Shannon, uh, you have some cushion, so why not push the envelope right there uh, and, and see if you can get away with something and uh, a bit of offsides? Most definitely. So our first line out of the second half going Old Glory's way. Let's see if we can release the backs a little bit more. I'm in interested to see um, this inside and outside connection between Zach and Selby uh, in the second half. It looks like they've placed uh, Zach in the 12 position here. Uh, so they switched out Selby uh, to the 13. It looks like he's holding a shoulder. And it's all for naught is not straight the call. Again, not you just hate to see the these unforced errors, mm -hmm. right? Scrum down, Shannon ball. All right, well, let's see what happens it's in our first scrum. It's pretty cool when we have Mick Galway, an Irish international legend, right in front of us, making the trip here with Shannon. Yes, uh, Shannon RFC, uh, the most successful club in the All-Ireland League. They've produced plenty of uh, of talent at the international level, British and Irish Lions Some even. of the most famous Irish players that have ever we've ever known, including the great, late great Anthony Foley and uh, Jerry Flannery, who was working with Munster this year. And uh, uh, the coach's brother, actually, uh, 
John the Bull Hayes, uh, who's uh, Tom Hayes, the coach's uh, brother. So lots of famous guys that have uh, played for this storied club. They're just tons and tons of history behind them. You know that they're when they play, they're playing with the pride of all those past players on them. Absolutely, and when you see old boys like McGawley looking on on the sidelines, you know you have big, big shoes to fill. So a point of contention here, so far, Old Glory has only won 20% of their scrums and lineouts as we're about to get set for another scrum. That's uh, the percentage, it's, that's lower than you want if you want to try and win a match, to put it, to put it like You're not going to win a match with that percentage uh, because it means that you're not going to have the ball. Mm -hmm. So that, um, we're going to have to see if, we, if we're going to be uh, in any way competitive in the second half, that has to change and change drastically. So let's see if this scrum right here can help us push up that percentage. It's like a, a good base here. Josh oh, Brown's going to be weak. He sees, he sees fresh meat. And he says, get off me. Michael Reed there with a quick take. And he ends up getting some ground. The scrum half fighting forward, showing he is not to be trifled with either. Now we'll set up with some pick. Oh, no, we're going Zach wide. Foro. Zach Foro with the crash ball. Just brought down, and a clean turnover by Shannon at the breakdown. Excellent snipe. Zach was a little isolated there. Didn't have the support he needed, and unfortunately, we have a penalty going Shannon's way. So we had the, the positive um, of that scrum, winning that scrum. Uh, Zach, or Josh Brown's run, bumping the wing, getting brought down, and then it was just that one lone runner with no support. Uh, and it leads to this penalty. Again, we're talking about the interlink play earlier, mm -hmm. and it goes right back to that. So uh, we outrun our own support, uh, and you can't do that on the, you know, when you're so close to the opposition's try line. There's always going to be a, uh, a good quality uh, sniper that's that's going to work that rock area, and uh, they uh, they got turned over quite easily, to be honest. Luckily, the kick left something to be desired. They're still in their own 22 which actually might end up being lucky if they're going for a clearance kick. Might not be, a, might not be terrible for them if they, uh, if they get clean ball here. And I do believe we have our first substitute on the field. Front as row. Vakalahi is exiting, and number 17 is on the field. As the ball spits out, Josh Brown on Glory's side. Yeah, Josh Brown first on the ball. The flying Hawaiian takes it up. Beautiful interplay wow. right there. Oh, uh, but it might have just gone forward from the Hawaiian. No, I think we've got a scrum to Old Glory here. Some more handbags. That's a little silly. Tyler Barbary, I believe, saying he's not afraid. Professional rugby has finally come to the district, and Lidos is a proud supporter of Old Glory DC. At Lidos, we use IT, engineering, and science to make the world safer, healthier, and more efficient, so we can all enjoy the game we love. Choose Lidos, and let's solve something important. Now let's go Old Glory. Thank you, Lidos. Here's a big putt in. We got it, we got it, oh. Michael Reed just could not get his hands on it and it has been wheeled, but the ball was under Old Glory's feet, so it remained in their possession. You saw Michael Reed trying to dig it out, he just couldn't get a it A little time. bit of gamesmanship by the Shannon Nine there, pulling him back yes. without the ball. Uh, it is, it's possible you could have got a little uh, a penalty there by the referee, but I guess he didn't see it because he was on the other side, which again, is great scrum half play. Which originally, <laughs> I thought the whistle, I thought the whistle was going to be a penalty uh, for that play off the ball. Mm -hmm. As I, we, I think we have a Shannon man. It looks like he's taking a bit of a knock. Field. Yeah, doesn't look super stable. A little groggy, he looks like the second row uh, or back row player. 
Could be, could be the beer. Who knows? <laughs> As we'll have a reset scrum to Old Glory. Now, again, the last scrum, very, very solid. They had clean ball out. Let's see if they can replicate that this time. Listen, I want you to clear left, so stay where you are. And again, we've got Zach uh, slotting in at that inside position. I believe Selby has exited the field as well. Looks like it. So I wonder if that shoulder really was giving him some trouble. So yeah. Zach has moved in to that uh, 12 spot, that inside center spot. Just relax. Everybody relax. That's good. Crouch. Back with the forward back arm wrestling match that is scrummaging. Set. I think that might be John Sage that's on in uh, in the midfield area. At number 23. Playing outside center now. Zach has moved into the inside slot. And it's a fight for the ball. Old Glory maintains it right on that goal line, able to stay in. Michael Reed marshalling his forwards. Finally out. Oh, the switch did not work according to plan, but the ball still ended up in Old Glory's hands, but it did go forward in that pass. It was a little too good to be true. And we've got more handbags. I wonder if the referee Derek Summers is gonna pull this aside and say no more warnings. Getting a little bit more chippy. It's all getting a little silly here. Quick scrum, all right? Yes, sir. Just settle down. He's white. I'm saying there's a scrum, so we can't go quick. Fair enough explanation yes. by the referee. <laughs> so yes, Derek Summers is the referee. Uh, he's one of the more well-known referees in the U.S. Uh, For he's, sure. He's done multiple MLR matches, college national championships, and as such, he's. Uh, very, very experienced. His word is gold. Very well respected as yes. well, I might add. <clears throat> so number six. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he said late possibly the next time he Play talks, the whistle and stop. will there be cards? Anything after that, just relax. Okay? Yes, sir. Calm down. Yes, sir. We'll get control. Yeah? Yes, sir. We're going to have a scrum here. Yes, sir. For a knock on. To us. All right? Yeah. No. Yes, sir. No, it's your scrum. Yes, sir. They, walk, they knocked it on. It's your scrum. Yeah. They knocked it on. We no, picked no. it up, and that's why no. we ran. Here we go. Josh Brown. Time on. Trying to confuse the referee on who knocked on who. <laughs> Who's on first? It's the role of the captain. Hey, if you can talk circles around him, <laughs> you might as well go ahead and try. I think Mr. <laughs> Mr. Summers has seen and heard all of that before. But again, you know, Derek Summers maintaining control of the match, not letting things get out of hand, um, which is which is what uh, a, a great match referee does. He lets get things stay in his control. So hopefully, we don't see any more handbags. Yeah, and even if you do, he's got it under control. Yes. It, there's nothing has happened here today that's been egregious. There's just been a not little bit of, you know, rough and tumble. And that's, that's to be expected at a high level rugby match. Well, Glory not getting pushed back in the scrum. They got the drive Finally on Finally, the drive is on. Play it. So uh, hey, guess what old Glory will be working on in training <laughs> this week? <laughs> Lots of scrummaging. Yeah, that's offside. Oh, yes, offside yeah. right there on the kick. But back for the penalty. Sunbound. <laughs> yeah, the backs, I guess, could take the rest of the week off and uh, just let the forwards. <laughs> the forwards might say that's what backs do during the week anyway. Well, that is what the backs do during the week anyway. Hey. Run pretty lines. Just got to comb your hair. <laughs> Favorite part of the game. Again, very, very good fundamentals. Nice little clearing kick. <clears throat> Set up their platform again. Back to the line out. Light four. All right, Shannon getting some good attacking position. As we have McElwee exiting the field in the number four jersey, as does Fred Wintermantle. Wintermantle. We've got more substitutes coming on. Tackler! 
So as you can tell, and we keep on talking about, this atmosphere is completely ridiculous. It's insane. Uh, and there are family-friendly atmosphere here and affordable tickets at oldglorydc.com. You're not going to want to miss this matchup next weekend against the Scotland U20s over Memorial Day weekend. That is going to be a great uh, fixture. Yeah, it'll be amazing. As we mentioned, we have a beer garden. We have a, a kids area with games. We have a tailgating spot where you can drive up with your car, bring your own food, bring your own drink. Just head over to oldglorydc.com and pick up your tickets for next week's match. And it's Memorial. And it's Memorial, yes. Yeah. yeah. It, it, it's your civic duty as an American <laughs> uh, uh, to cheer this squad on. Come on, your red, white, and blue. Yes. Here we go. You'll be joined by literally thousands Crouch. of people. Literally thousands, yes. Fine. As we get Michael Reed, another put in. Set. Let's see if Steady. these front row substitutes can show their impact. Advantage. Clean ball out. Finally, advantage to, to Old Glory off of a scrum. And we'll bring that back up. Tighthead driving across. Tighthead was driving across is the call. Shannon not happy with something. Some of their players slow to get back. You don't speak to me like that. I don't talk to you like that. Just relax. Yeah? Be controlled. Again, Derek. Showing why rugby referees are uh, the ultimate generals. You don't see that in too many other sports. Absolutely uh, not. Grown men listening to a referee uh, in, in this setting. It's kind of a shame how other sports can't take a cue from rugby. But do you see the way he actually, you know, he heard the talk back, yes. but he said in a respectful manner back yes. to the player, don't talk to me like yes. that. Uh, that's brilliant refereeing, wouldn't mm -hmm. you say? It is. You know, it's it clean, sets, it's respectful. It sets the boundaries. Them. Yes. We got a ball here. Got two balls in play. I think we only need the one. Only need the one as Oshin O'Neill gets us started again. Looks like we got Khalid Williams on there. Um, yeah. And that front jumper just getting in front of Old Glory's pod. Leave it, They've leave really it. been able to disrupt that as we mentioned. Still probably hovering at that 20% scrum and line-out win percentage on their own. And it's exactly the phase of play, though, that you would expect Old Glory to be losing in, yes. I have to be honest, because it's the area that takes the most time uh, to get correct. And that ball went straight out. Yeah. More handbags. We've got it right in front of us. Guys, this is it's a little silly. Yeah, it's a little silly. No one came to see that. Maybe some people did. Maybe some people, yeah. maybe some people did. Good captaincy from Josh Brown, I'd have yes. to say there. You Running know? in saying, we have the ball, don't we do anything stupid. We have the ball, stupid. don't do anything stupid. Exactly, you know. There's no need for that. Let's see what Derek Summers says. He's getting spoken to from the touch judge. I did not see what so happened after that for, kick. For knowing white for the lead hit. Yes, sir. Yeah. So we're going to restart with that. We're not having any more of this. Yes, sir. I need you to get both your teams together. Yes, sir. And sort it out and relax. Yes, yeah? sir. This is an exhibition game. Yes, sir. Settle down. Do it right now. Yes, sir. Do it right now. I see Guy Lopresti on there, hugging his brother, Dante. Yeah, yeah. Those boys together. won't take a backward get step. So I believe we have Josh, a late get him together. call on Michael get him Reed together and talk about it right now. after the kick. Yes, yes. Went out on the full, about over here. So they will get the ball where the ball crossed out of bounds, and it will be Shannon's penalty. So they're going to get the penalty further up because the ball was kicked uh, before the late hit, so they get the advantage of the ball going forward. Neither squad has scored in the second half, uh, but both have had their opportunities. But there's been much more parity. Yes. Uh, for sure. Not just on the scoreboard, obviously, but um, within the game itself. I think uh, uh, the Old Glory boys have figured a few things out here and there. Um, and, uh, you know, the Shannon guys are pretty comfortable in their lead. And, uh, you know, they're just, everybody's working hard still. And uh, we'll see what the next few minutes have in store. Uh, Shannon have a good platform here, uh, attacking ball inside the, the uh, Old Glory 22. So they'll be looking to put on a, a strike move here, I'd say. And I believe Mo Katz just came on for Oshin O'Neill. 
Mo Katz, a player I got to, to commentate on while he was in college. A fantastic local product, mm -hmm. um, extremely physical uh, in all facets of the game. Absolutely. Uh, Mo has just come back from injury. Uh, from and he's right there in the tackle. Yes, he is. So Mo uh, did an ACL injury um, just over a year ago. So he's back fully fit again, which is great to see. And it's uh, that fully fit Mo Katz that led to that turnover on that tackle. I wonder if that ball was tipped. It certainly a nice like kick, it. A nice kick for Old Glory. Can't quite recover, Ryan Burroughs. So I have a scrum. Oh. That is unfortunate. The little things, right? Yes. But again, you know, it, they show that they're not going to be uh, intimidated, um, you know, by, by Shannon's mall in creating that turnover. So I think Mo Katz is a little bit bigger than Oshin. Uh, so we'll see if that extra little bit of weight on the front row is going to make some difference. Of course, then you'll be able to drive straight. Yeah, okay. Yeah, here, yeah, here. Shrimp, please, shrimp, please. Down on me. Here we go. Check in. Crouch. Down. Bind. Just taking a look at the Shane and Zach line. <laughs> Having plenty of, uh, of those back three players inserting. Just reset. Just hold the mark. Chase Not it. paying Chase too much attention to this weak side. Yeah, I'd be careful with this winger lurking behind the tan. There could be some kind of little loop yep. uh, happening right there. Maybe a, a preordained yeah. backline move. Can you stay there. We haven't gotten too many um, set backline moves. Not too many. I, to, I would have squad, expected a couple more, to be yes. honest. Maybe we'll see one here. But again, Shannon will be having such dominance in the scrums that, you know, wh why would they bother? Yeah, <laughs> it's true. The more intricate pass you attempt, the more often uh, there's a better chance it can go to ground. Yeah. Just do the Let's little things it. well. Let's use it. Shannon told to use it. Nice flat pass. Or it went forward. I think it went forward on, 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 the, on the drop. Yeah. I thought the pass was fine. Yep, absolutely. He just couldn't take it in. So as you mentioned, you having dominance in the scrums, why go for a, a potentially um, dangerous set piece like that? Indeed, it was a good move, the 12 hitting the line at an angle there. We could see the, the 11 looping around. He would be, um, possibly he would be there to, to rock if that went to a tackle area or be in support uh, for the pass, uh, if not. So uh, a nice little variation there, uh, good to see. Hopefully we'll see a few more going forward. And again, we have Tony Gerard Cusack down in the front row, getting some attention to his ankle. He's put on some shift. He has yes. played really well. Again, Coming you can off. get tickets at oldglorydc.com for next weekend's Memorial Day matchup against the Scotland U20 team. That Scotland U20 team uh, will be going to the Junior World uh, Championships. That's the highest level. This is one of the best U20 teams in the world. And as we mentioned at halftime, some of those players are going to be very close to playing on the Scottish national team. You're not going to want to miss that matchup. You're not going to want to miss this atmosphere. So go to oldglorydc.com and get you and your family and your friends tickets. We have everything you want here. Beer garden, tailgate area, kids area, affordable pricing, family friendly. I mean, how much better can it get? I didn't even mention the rugby game itself. I mean, that's going to be a fantastic it's match. It's almost secondary, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's crazy to even think that we've been looking forward to this game for so long, but the atmosphere is yes. just killer here today. I can't believe it. I mean, and the crowd, I mean, as hot as it is out here, the crowd has been here almost all day um, for those two curtain raiser matches, um, tailgating, just, just loving everything out here, and especially this facility at Catholic University, this Cardinal, Cardinal Stadium has been um, the tailgate kind of was, was packed at noon. Oh yes. Yeah. I mean, you can drive your car up, park it, bring your own food. Uh, we didn't get that lucky. We had to sit here and, you know, and, and work, which you know, which is good. I we don't, don't mind. mind. No. Yeah, we don't mind. We got a front row seat. I, I, I get to call, uh, you know, a professional rugby game in America. That's which, pretty which, cool. Which five years ago, <laughs> no one, you know, no one would have thought that could happen. Which just goes to show you, entering their third season, expanding to three cities. We've got New England, which. Boston, but we're calling them New England. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. uh, then you've got obviously got uh, Old Glory here in DC, and then we're having having an Atlanta team join the top three as well. So three new teams bringing it to twelve. Nine. Finally going to a conference system. Um, it's just really exciting times in rugby across America. 
Couldn't agree more. And it's a beautiful scrum here by All Glory. Oh, Josh Brown again. Josh Taking Brown is it. having a day. He is not getting brought down on the first tackle at any point today. As we finally have a breakdown oh. on the outside. Kina. Kina! Kina is away under the posts. Try time. Flying Hawaiian. So I think Kina that was Sage Malifu. to Kina. That was a, yeah, it was a beautiful offload from Sage uh, to Kina there. Uh, Old Glory finally, no team has really found the edge on a set piece like that. Old Glory getting the better of them. Drawing first blood in the second half here. Uh, 13 to 26. That, that is what uh, Old Glory could do to you in, the, in a split second. Absolutely. And it was all because Josh Brown got that little bit of momentum off the back of the scrum. Yeah. They were able to maintain right possession. And then they had beautiful hands. Look at John Sage right here. Ready, 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 and away. That ball is deadly. Deadly accurate, and you're not stopping Kina from there. Yeah, bring, getting it back to, to Josh Brown. Breaking that first tackle, he's still, you know, he only gained two to three more feet, but it, breaking that first tackle drew in more defenders. And it makes the Shannon defensive line take a step or two yes. backwards. And that is all that's needed at this level to create the space uh, out wide that they got the ball there and you just saw the results. Yeah, and that stage pass, holding on to the last second to the defender had no other option but to stick on him. Uh, that, that was beautiful rugby. And I believe, due to the weather again, we're going to have our mandated water break. Uh, we have to have water every 20 minutes uh, in the conditions like this. Um, but you couldn't have asked for a better way to, to end that second, uh, end the first part of the second half. Correct. And, you know, um, you can see now the old glory guys, they've, they've put a, their first one to score here. They got a beautiful seven pointer on the board. Uh, they're back in the game. We have a full quarter of the match or more to go. Um, the score is 26 15 to Shannon. Uh, so they're. They're 11 points down right now, two scores in it. Um, this game is, is right still here to be to be won. So I can guarantee you that's what the coaching staff over there are, and, the, and the captains are going to be talking about in the huddle. And of course, the Shannon guys are going to be saying something uh, along the same lines. We can't allow these guys to score again or we're going to be in terrible trouble. <clears throat> this is what we've mentioned since the beginning. We're uh, finally getting to the last stanza of this match when the heat is really going to take its toll. Uh, we've, we've mentioned some of the old glory boys talking about it, um, you know, just getting used to it. But this is what they're training in, you know. Shannon is not useless whatsoever, uh, except for when they flew over here. I have a couple days preparation, but at home, it's not getting up into the upper 80s with this humidity. No, very, uh, well, never with the humidity and very, very rarely with the heat index as well. So uh, they're just getting into the summer months in Ireland. And, you know, if it hits 70 there, it's uh, head to the beach kind of a day. <laughs> you can see there's a lot of sunblock on those Shannon guys. <laughs> Okay, let's roll, fellas. So again, before we get uh, started with this last Time 20, on. you can go to oldglorydc.com and get your tickets for next week's match against the Scotland G20 here at Cardinal Stadium at Catholic University. Uh, everything you could ever want in a weekend is going to be here over Memorial Day. It's going to be a fantastic atmosphere. I think uh, once the reviews are in from today, from the people that were here to their friends and families, those tickets will be like sold out oh, quickly. Yeah. <laughs> So a deep kick by Shannon to start off, and then a return kick. I think that was by Cool. It was. Really pinning Shannon back. Got this fullback taking a contact. He probably wishes he had that one back. I saw a sweat get rocked off of his head on that one. That, that was, was a rocky a hit big right there. Hit. And all glory, really going for the turnover there, but just collapsing there in the scrum. And I believe that could have been a knock on. If he wanted to, he could call that knock on on the quick tap. Well, but it was I, not I, on the mark. Yet again, though, I mean, I know you they're exuberant, but that's just over-exuberance there in the ruck. They're coming through, but they know they have to stay on their feet. You know, um, the coach, when they watch the video back uh, uh, over during the week, the coaching staff are not going to be happy with the penalties at the ruck area. Yes, there's the difference between making a nuisance and slowing their ball down. Uh, and losing your feet and falling down. They had, a, they had a legitimate shot at a turnover right there if they had just kept their feet. But they have to know the whens, the whys, and the when not to, okay? Yes. And they, they've got everything else, but the not to part is, uh, is a work in progress. No contest. Great Off ball. the top. Oh! And he knocks it on. Those we're talking about with the conditions. That ball is probably soaking slick, wet. Slick, slick. 
and you can see he was catching it right at about his knees, which on a regular day would be considered a perfect pass, but in today's conditions, you really need to put it in the bread basket to keep it in there. Very much so. I was also uh, the... Uh the winger that was giving that pass was slight variation there. It looked like they were pulling the 10 out. Um, so if that had gone to, to ground, they would have probably set a rock there and then they would have had a fast ball with the 10 coming back around the around the outside, which would have spelt serious trouble for the for the glory back line. Crouch! Fine! Set! Steady! Down. Another solid scrum. Really solid scrums here in the second half. They've really locked it down, Old Glory has. Mo Katz getting his first look on offense. Falling forward. Quick recycle by Reed. I think Mo Katz has made a difference. Oh, yes, absolutely. His energy coming on has really electrified the squad. But again, that pass just a little bit behind the man and going to ground. at the back, so it played away. Fair enough. Keep your elbow up. Yeah. I'd be interest, interested to see uh, if Old Glory is going to put some pressure on the Shannon scrum. They've had a more stable base on their own put in. Maybe just try and Crouch. catch them off guard. Fine. Again, a more classic backlight look here Set. for the Shannon guys see if they decide to use it. Excellent scrum there. Really just a little bit. Great, great defense coming up there by Old Glory. Please, please. Ooh, a little bit of face-to-face -face contact. Both players getting up quickly after that one. Yet again. Another penalty. You got to roll away. You can't dive in. Keep your feet. And some new blood on the field, possibly a little, little antsy, just wanted to get into some contact. Yeah. Again, though, these are the unforced errors that are criminal in my mm -hmm. mind. You know, these are the things that I'll see for next week that they will absolutely have to clean up. If they don't, you know, it's going to be a very, very long day for those guys. But, you know, those are all very, very uh, coachable things with a little video study, a little bit more analysis. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, they'll have the butterflies away. You know, uh, and so we have to we have to work out a little bit here how they're going to develop themselves uh, going forward as an uh, each as individuals and as a team. So a yeah. similar play that they tried the last line out. This one finally going to hand, getting that nice crash ball up there with the center. They look to attack that far side. Nice pop pass back in. Another recycle by Patrick Hare. Nice contact there by Old Glory. Leave him wide, leave. He's good. Ball's up, both of you. Josh Brown like, with yes. the ball again. Possibly turned into a mall. Yeah, go, both of you. No. Ball stays on Shannon's ball, side. Go back, go back. Lots of pressure there at the breakdown. Good. And the ball is Went backwards. had to have. Yeah, because it did go backwards by the. Got some space here on the weak side now. Yes, the blind side flanker taking it up. Let's see if Old Glory can get set quickly. A solo runner, put some pressure on him. Got a recycle by Hare. And a searching kick to the wing. No one's back there. Favorable high bounce. Who can jump the highest? And it rolls out of bounds. Very well placed kick again. It's on blue. On blue? Yeah. Oh! They said it went off a of blue. Off blue last. Old Glory getting lucky on that one. I didn't see who was contesting it, but no player really wanted to catch it right there. Hmm. How many? Full. Full. Well, Katz with the throw. See if he can hit his, hit his jumper. He's in, it's Shan's done a fantastic Seven. job of getting their pod directly in front of Old Glory's every single time. Uh -oh. This one, just a bit of a miscue. Will this be Shannon's first try of the second half? 22. And nope. it will not be. I wonder. So he, ran, he, he ran to the end goal. Oh, I guess he, he ran into, into the end goal. He ran out of bounds. You don't see that every okay, day. Yeah, up. you don't see that Back every up. day. Back up. Now we finally have the wind behind Oak Glory's back. Let's see if they can use this. 
I guess the Shannon guys aren't used to playing on an American football no. field. Yeah, yeah, that's true. <laughs> that's not exactly what you want to happen. Blocked 22 dropout. However, they maintain the possession. Nice little pop by Josh Brown. No cats there, collecting a nice pop. And he's not brought down, he's not held. Great run. This is what Old Glory needs. Sean Hartick is on at scrum half for Old Glory. A nice little breakthrough right there. There he is, beautiful going passes. Quickly, going quickly now. And that's John Davis. Straightening up his run. Attacking the weak side still here. He's down, must be released. This is some great phase play that we're getting from Old Glory. They just need that spark. And it was that initial run. Lovely pass. Ryan Burrows cutting back inside, getting the stiff arm on there. Looking for the offload, finding it. John Sage. Hopefully Captain his supports out. can get with him. Quick recycle. Brought down around midfield. Let's see if we'll go wide here. Ball right. shoots out. Play on. It went backwards, play on. Oh, cool. Trying to find some space, finally brought down. Ball stays with Old Glory, but it's brought down uh -oh. off sides. And he's holding onto the ball on the ground. This, that's a bit ridiculous. Yeah, and the ref agrees. Derek Summers says, He's had enough of it. You can get out of bed now. You're late for school. Get back. Listen to the fans. Yeah, they're finally, they're still okay. here. They're not giving up. Neither is this Old Glory side. Score remains 26 to 15. Old Glory, the only team to score here in the second half. And they have the momentum right now. The lineout well, has been a point of contention for the squad. Now let's see what they yeah. do on this one, if they like yeah. to go for a safe throw. Yeah. Although with this Shannon lineout, there really is no safe throw. Their lifters and jumpers have been pretty spot on. Uh, old well, Glory ball though, Tyler Barbary. Not how they wanted it, but they got it. And they could not That's hang onto it on the ground. We're passing when they should be holding onto it a little bit and holding onto it when they should be passing yes. it. <laughs> Time off, the Shannon player is down. Yeah, I mean, interesting right there, it was... Um, Time off! I wouldn't say it was completely wrong to go for the offload. Maybe it's mostly not. wrong. I was it's saying right not. there, you should probably just be safe. Calm down. You know, I you think I think count your blessings when you're right five there. meters out. I think that safety at mm -hmm. that first phase is the most important. Maintain possession, set your rook, and then play off it. Mm -hmm. uh, we just got a little bit, uh, you know, disorganized there and a little bit frantic. Well, again, they're all things that's going to come. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sometimes it's not the, not the one-handed offload and contact that that means you're a pro rugby player sometimes it's the just taking it into contact and going to ground it's the decision yes. making and speaking of decision making it would be a fantastic decision if you were to head over to oldglorydc.com and get your tickets for next week's memorial day matchup against scotland u20s well, and also view the schedule because they've got uh, a fantastic exhibition schedule lined up over the next coming weeks uh, that everyone's looking forward to, the players, the fans here. Uh, and Roland, as you mentioned, once word gets out and, and the reviews get out, it's packed here right now. So there's not really much room for more people. So once word gets out, you're really going to want to get a ticket before this is, uh, becomes a sellout crowd. This is one of the, this is maybe the best atmosphere I've ever seen in the United States. And I've been to club championships uh, uh, of all different levels and this is phenomenal. Yeah, this really reminds me of uh, what the Seattle Seawolves in Major League Rugby have going on. Um, they've got sold out season tickets yep. for the next two seasons. Uh, and it's you know a similar sized uh, facility, um, you know, still a large crowd. And I, and I think Old Glory can really be sort of the, the Seattle of the East Coast as far as facility and atmosphere. Because that's, on. that's one of the loudest places to play in the US as far as professional rugby is concerned. And rugby players love an event. Oh yes, like it's the and this is going to be the biggest event in the city, in the area. Crouch. Fine. Set. Let's use it. Let's use it. Old boy putting the pressure on. Nice cutback run there by Shannon. But old glory. Nice defense to keep him, keep him in line. 
Leave it, leave. Shannon's still under pressure here. This breakdown is becoming vicious. Shannon not getting any room. Going for the poach, not quite getting it. There is space on the outside. <laughs> that player was not expecting it. No attempt. No attempt. I, I guess the ball was knocked down. I did not see. Yeah, we were in a bad spot knockdown. here. You see that very, very corner. I thought it just hit the Shannon player's shoulder. I think it was an. I think it was a knock. Yeah, will that be an intentional knock? That might be a card. There's a number of different infringements. Not when you're under pressure. There's in general. I attribute that sloppy play. Yes, sir. Yeah, we just need to see some discipline. We've got 10 minutes in the game. We should yes, lose the player. Yeah. Yes, sir. Sort it out. Yes, yeah. Again, great referee. Yes. Very, very clear. Uh, not condescending, just saying. No, no. See the discipline. Ten minutes left. Let's keep this thing going. Let's keep it positive. Yeah. I mean, he called it sloppy play. It wasn't, you know, he did, wasn't meant to be, but it was a, an opportunity that was taken away from the Shannon player. So, and referee Summers just again reiterating that he wants some discipline. We've got some Blue Shannon subs sub coming Blue off the field. Sub. Looks like we have a second row forward. No, you're out. You're out. You're out. You've already said it. You're out. Trying to sneak one in the line out, Shannon is. Naughty, naughty. You're not that sneaky. Very clean take there. We haven't seen too much of this mall yep. since the first, I want to say, 20 minutes moving. of the first half. You're not moving. Let's go. But O'Gloy doing a great job of stopping them in their tracks. This very dangerous fullback. Got the dancing feet. Happy feet, if you will. He's tiny, but he's got some moves. He's very shifty. If you're going to be that size, you got to have some nice feet. Nice contact there. Leave, 12, leave! Are you fucking kidding? Going for the poach. Derek Summers says, leave it. Shannon trying to use the width. Oh, he's isolated. Just getting brought down. Still again attacking this, this short side. Ryan Burrows swallowing up the Shannon man. The prop having a great angle there, using the referee as a bit of a, a shield. I think that was Connor Glenn up there, number one. And they've got a great, great turnover. Mo Katz initiated that contact and created the turnover. With Sean, Har Sean Hartick in there. Here goes Nick Cool. Nick chip cool. through on the chip. He's away. He, they've got Ball it. Gathered up. Dakota Worth. Dakota Worth showing his worth, and he will dot it down under the yeah. post with a fantastic dive. This is a rugby match. We got our ourselves now. a game. The score, 26 to 20. That conversion should be an easy one. This match should move to 26 to 22. This is amazing. I mean, this, you, 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 you couldn't have written that one up any better. What a, a turnover little by, chip through. By impact sub Mo Katz, creating a turnover penalty. Uh, and then Ryan Burroughs with a quick, quick tap, uh, he gathered the ball, and he offloaded it to Dakota Worth. Oh, Nick Cool. Uh, yes, they're cool. And then Dakota Worth just gathering up that, uh, you know, a forward running in support. Um, not, not ready to give up. But you know he's been there all day. He's done a lot of cleanup well, duty all day. Well. So well. He's been on the Sydney field 12. the entire the time. The entire time. Rate that dive 12. for me. What do you think? He's so solid. He's uh, very tall, so he is just as effective uh, as a jumper, uh, but has athletic ability. I mean, he was at Army 7s. He was, uh, uh, you know, so you know he has an engine. Uh, I'm quite happy that he's on our <laughs> side. Let's just put it like that. Yeah, one, of the, one of those players that you're happy is in your jersey. This this match now is 26 to 22. It was 26 to five at halftime. Old Glory is running away with the second half, down by four points. About six to seven, maybe eight minutes left. You can tell momentum has definitely shifted. Whether it's the weather bearing down on Shannon, the crowd firing up this Old Glory side. But this match is far from over. I think it's all of the above. All of the above. We'll take it all. Old Glory's looking to take it all right now. Let's 
kick close to the sideline, taken by Burroughs. Stays oh, in bounds. Lovely step. And yeah, makes the first man miss. Nice recycle, Mo Katz. There's Mo again. Falling forward. Great clean up by Tyler Barbary. Yeah, this is very quick recycling. Only made possible by those quick clean outs in the ruck. I think you're seeing again. the glory subs bench really uh, starting to take some. Oh, that cannot be. Oh, no, he's there. Got the call. Absolutely, absolutely. And we're going to go quick again. Yeah. We say no, it was not on the mark. Sean Hartig with the ball. But all glory. Not Sean Hartig has provided up. quite a spark since he came off as well. Different yes. kind of player from yes. Reed. Oh, they're going to quick tap it. Shannon, they were pretty far back on that far side. The oh, flying Hawaiian. Kina, can he step it back inside, find his support? And he does. Oh, glory, catching Shannon sleeping on that one. Get another recycle here. It's John Davis taking the ball up. Another one of those local guys. We have a uh, we're playing advantage, Old Glory is so let's see if they do something risky here, see if they can gain some ground knowing that they have the safe That's advantage. Two on side either. Is that a break down the sideline yeah. by, by Sage, I believe? Yes it is. You can definitely tell Old Glory looks like this is their first ten minutes. They're full of energy. This crowd just willing them on. And we'll go back to the advantage. This is a better spot than the first time they had advantage. Go, Shannon, so go. Now you're good, go. two separate offsides. Yes. Yep, Shannon are starting to wear down. They're losing their discipline just a little bit. This heat is definitely starting to take it out of them. There's only seven or eight minutes left here. Let's see if uh, Old Glory can push it through. And Old Glory not wanting to go to the line out considering how their past couple have gone. But they need to get, get centered here. Need to get reset. They're holding the him up. Down. They're holding him up. Keep driving him. I thought his knee was down. Yes. Well, now he's held up. I thought his knee was down at first, but it's driving. Got to keep pushing. I doubt they're going to get the ball back. And they've got another advantage on the collapse. Things could not be going any wow. better for Old Glory. You got to wonder, this close, will you go for the line out and not the quick tap? I would love to see that again. I, I'm not sure about uh, about that call. Um, I would have always thought if it had to come down that it would have been a turnover, a Shannon scrum. But uh, clearly, a turnover too. clearly referee Summers uh, saw an infringement there or he wouldn't have called it. All right, Bo Katz, I think we've got advantage again, not yep. back 10. So why go for the line out at all? Nice chip kick through. Good for Burroughs. And we'll come back. So you got to wonder. Yeah, you're gonna have a talk. One more, one more talking to, and we might have a card here. You can tell Shannon really not ready for this last 10, 15 minutes of uh, of play. Absolutely not. They are literally they are holding on for dear life right now. You collapsed it. Hold on. You collapsed it. I tried to give you enough time to get 10. If you choose not to get 10, that's your decision. If we have another infringement down here, you will lose the player. Just here with this. Just listen to what I'm telling you. If you do, have, if you have another Derek's infringement, not down having here, any you will lose chat. the player. He's sort out patience. your discipline. Yes. You understand that? It's same we play for them. Have a word. Yes. Yes. But you told us to use the up here in the exact same situation. Mm -mm. No. Mall was moving forward. Yeah. yeah. Please go 10. For if you choose to not ever, have a word with your I, team, I that's your decision. Ever, okay. He would convince the referee to change his mind. Perfect. But no. Yeah. Have you ever seen Players that happen? are still oh, oh, oh. 0 for a million uh, <laughs> on getting the referee to change his mind on a call. Cool. Very right, true. To Not going to stop him from trying, though. Yeah. All right, so we're finally going to, they're calling for a scrum. Would okay. you have guessed this after go. the first 10 minutes in the first half? That towards in the last five minutes, Old Glory would call for a scrum. Let's the coaching staff here. are going to be delighted. Oh, yes. I can tell you that much right now with the second half performance. Crouch! Fine. I think that uh, that fullback out there out wide might get a nice shoulder from Josh Brown. Reset, reset. Again, it all started because they were able to get the platform this half. Just go on. Here. Sorted out that scrum, and everything else has been roses since then. 
The seconds are ticking away on this match. Maybe four minutes left. The sun is going down behind the trees. We are reaching the twilight hours Crouch. of this beautiful Sunday afternoon. Fine. But the energy is as high as it's ever been. Set. Four points separate Shannon RFC and Old Glory DC. Josh Brown going weak side. Oh. Popping it off. We got Ryan Burroughs coming back inside, avoiding that sideline. <laughs> and the ball just bounced forward. Oh, that guy flinched on that push. That's two punches. <laughs> that guy should be embarrassed on Shannon. All right, another I flinch of Dakota Worth kept running at me too. <laughs> <laughs> so scrum down to Shannon. You got to think, regardless of how this second half ends up, Shannon might not be the team walking off with their heads held high. To not score a single point in the second half after running up 26, to let up 17 points unanswered. Is not how they saw the second half going. Absolutely not. They lost their advantage of the scrum. And you could argue that Old Glory's lineout problems haven't been because of Shannon. We have this crowd getting behind Fine. the boys in white. Set. Let's see what happens with the scrum as we have to put in. Ball is out. Shannon electing to run with it. They're right at the 22. They're going to try to maintain possession now to see the game out, I think. Let's see, can they do this for what could be what could be four minutes? It's a big ask, especially with so many fatigued bodies around there. You can see Old Glory is not contesting in the ruck outside of that upfront tackle. They're content to put their men around the sides. Make sure that there are no gaps in this defense. Back up, back up. We're going to get a box kick here. Use it. Or a forward pod. Get a forward pod here to Cusack. 20 seconds. 20 seconds left in the match. The referee keeps the actual time on himself, on his watch. The time that we see here on the uh, on the scoreboard on screen is not always Stay correct. Up. So 10 Stay seconds left in this more. match. One more. One more. And I wonder if Old Glory should be contesting. Oh, and now we'll forward. forward. Are we going to get a call from the touch judge? No, roll we are time, not. That might have been missed. That was the chance that they needed right there. Oh, we need to see a replay of that I last I'd love rock. to see a replay of that because that looked like it went forward. Regardless, though, that was an amazingly hard-fought match by Old Glory to come back from 26 to 5 in the first half to lose 26-22. They literally looked like a different team yeah. in the second half. Completely different. They got the nerves out, they started playing a little bit more cohesive, and gosh darn, they nearly, nearly got that last try uh, to win the game. But, you know, it wasn't to be. Shannon, deserved winners, I'd yes. say, based, based uh, just on that first half performance. Uh, they were excellent. Yeah. And uh, we can definitely say that the heat wore them down quite a bit in the second half. They never put a point on the board but their own ability just to see out the game and their own, like little bit of uh, gamesmanship, I think we will we'll call yes. it, uh, but uh, fair play to them. They did what was needed to be done. Yes, this match had a little bit of everything. Uh, we had some handbags, didn't see any cards, which, which was great. It was a, a clean match throughout, a um, hard fought match, almost comeback win for the home team. Uh, the future is looking very, very bright for Old Glory DC. Uh, best of luck to Shannon. But we'll be back next week for Memorial Day matchup between Old Glory and the Scotland U20s. Again, head to oldglorydc.com uh, to pick up your tickets. Um, but I'm Can't I'm wait. Thompson. Joined I'm by Roland Pratt. Thanks for joining us. Thank you very much. See you next week.